Whether you're a beginner or an experienced investor, ETFs or exchange traded funds are an essential component of a well diversified portfolio. Let's look at these three ETFs in this video and understand why they are a great way to build a strong portfolio. No more delay, let's go. First on our list and not a surprise at all, it's the Vanguard S&P 500 Index ETF, ticker symbol VFV. VFV is a cornerstone for Canadian investors looking to tap into the US stock market. This ETF tracks the S&P 500 Index, providing exposure to America's top 500 companies. VFV offers diversification across various sectors and is ideal for long-term growth. It basically mirrors the performance of American blue chip stocks. VFE is currently trading at $104, up 12% year to date with a 52 week high of $109 and a low of $86.5. Over the last 5 years, it's up 55% and since inception in 2012, it's up 322%. However, historically, the S&P 500 has returned over 10% annualized returns and less than 10% fund managers can beat it over the long run. S&P 500 also holds the record of 10% annualized returns over the last century. That's 100 years. Now let's look at some characteristics of VFV. The number of stocks in the ETF currently sits at 507 and it's usually around 500 as you would expect. It is currently trading at a PE ratio of 22.9 and even pays a dividend of 1.5%. Please note any dividend payouts mentioned in the video may vary based on when you are watching this. Let's take a quick look at the sectors contained within this. We see that close to 30% can be attributed to tech companies while healthcare and financial companies come in at second and third with 12 to 13%. Sectors such as basic materials and utilities come in last at about 2 to 2.5%. Looking at the top 10 holdings, first thing to note is that they alone account for close to 32% of the S&P 500. Of course, we have our favorites here, Apple, Nvidia, Google, Tesla and more. VFV has an extremely low expense ratio with a MER of just 0.09%. Basically, that's how much it costs you to hold this fund. Trust me, it's way lower than what any financial advisor would charge you and still have a hard time beating the S&P 500. Next one is the BlackRock iShares Core S&P TSX Cap Composite Index ETF, ticker symbol XIC. For investors focused on Canadian equities, XIC is a go-to option. It tracks the entire Canadian stock market. It offers diversification within the Canadian market spanning sectors like finance, energy and technology. The highest concentration is in financials coming in at 30%. Similar to the S&P 500, the Canadian market is also highly concentrated in the top 10 holdings with RBC and TD topping the list with over 5% weight. Right after that, we see the Canadian tech favorite Shopify. Overall, the top 10 holdings account for over 35%. Now, because so many Canadian stocks are dividend paying, XIC offers a dividend distribution of 3.3%. Great for passive income lovers. The current PE of XIC is at 12.78, which should make you feel comfortable buying it at this point too. XIC was started by BlackRock back in 2001. The annual compounded return of this ETF sits at 8.36% over the last decade. XIC is currently trading at $31, up 2.36% year to date with a 52 week high of 33 and a low of 20 over the last 5 years, it's up 24% and since inception in 2001, it's up 152%. XIC also offers a low expense ratio with a MER of just 0.06%. It's even lower than VFV because XIC is a domestic stock for us Canadians. If you're looking to invest in the broad Canadian markets, XIC is a great option. The last one is the Vanguard FTSE Canadian High Dividend Yield Index ETF, ticker symbol VDY. This is a Canadian favorite for our passive income friends. VDY focuses on the Canadian dividend paying stocks, making it a reliable income generator. It emphasizes dividend quality and offers diversification within the Canadian markets. It provides exposure to companies that are specifically known for their consistent dividend payouts. It holds about 53 companies and current PE ratio sits at 12.8. The dividend yield is amazing coming in at 5.2%. Looking at the sector weightage, you do get extremely high concentration in financials and energy since those are the highest dividend paying sectors in Canada. Next on the list is telecom sitting at 7.3%. As you'll see, you get no exposure to the Canadian tech sector through this ETF. Well, it's great if you're trying to diversify away from tech. The top 10 holdings basically account for 70% of the ETF. We have RBC and TD topping the list again as we saw with XIC. We also have BMO and Scotiabank in the mix. Some energy companies to note are Enbridge and Suncor. 
However, VDY is not cheap to own and has a pretty high expense ratio with a MER of 0.22%. VDY is currently trading at $40, down 1.87% year to date with a 52 week high of $44 and a low of $38.50. Over the last 5 years, it's up 21%, and since inception in 2012, it's up 65%. But if you're holding this ETF, it's going to be for the dividend payout and not really for the growth. Now we have seen the three ETFs. How do they compare to each other? Based on pure performance, VF VFE beats XIC and VDY over the last decade. However, due to the smaller size of the Canadian market, VDY and XIC are pretty correlated and you will find most of the companies in VDY also in XIC. Now this comes down to a personal choice whether you want to favor diversification over dividends or the other way around. By holding the XIC, you get great diversification but lower dividend yield, while VDY offers you good enough diversification with higher dividend yield. But remember, with VDY, you might miss out on stocks like Shopify. One simple mix could be VFE, VDY, and if you want to invest in Canadian tech stocks, just buy them separately. Currently, I own VFE and not the other two. I just directly invest in some good dividend paying stocks in Canada. I even have a small position in Shopify because I like the company. Whatever you do, make sure it aligns with your goals. Keep learning and stay on top of your finances. Until next time.